Hello, my dear students. Welcome back. Once again, I am here for solving the exercise 3.4. Okay. So here is the first question of exercise 3.4, in which we will have to say that it is true or false. Now, what is the criteria? How will we decide that is it true or false? Like the first question, all rectangles are squares. So, if rectangle contains all the properties of square, it is true. Otherwise, it is false. Okay. So, does it uh, happens? No, it doesn't because square contain more properties than rectangle. What is that more more property? All the sides are equal in re in rectangle. All the sides are not equal, and diagonals are perpendicular bisector. In rectangle, diagonals are not perpendicular bisector, so this way it is false. All the rectangles are not squares. Okay, next, all rhombuses are parallelogram. So does rhombus contain all the properties of parallelogram? Yes, it contain all the properties. Like, it is having two pair of parallel lines. Its opposite sides are equal. Its opposite angles are equal. Its adjacent angle sum is 180 degree, and its diagonals are bisector. Some extra property it has, so that doesn't make the difference. But it contain rhombus contain all the properties of parallelogram. That is why it is true. Now, I hope you are uh, are you are able to understand what I am going going to explain to you. Rhombus must contain all the properties of parallelogram. If it is there, it is true. Rectangle does not contain all the property of square. That is why it is false. Now next, all squares are rhombus and rectangle. All the squares are rhombus. Yes, because squares contain all the properties of rhombus, including all the sides are equal, including diagonals are perpendicular bisector. So it is a rhombus. Squares are rectangles also. Why? Because square contain all the properties of rectangle. Rectangles are having what property? The diagonals must be equal. The diagonals of square are also equal. What else? All the angles must be 90 degree. So all the angles are 90 degree here. That is why this is also true. Next, all the squares are. Not parallelogram. How come it is possible? We studied in the in our in my previous lecture that re square, rectangle, and rhombus are the type of parallelogram only. So this is absolutely false that squares are not parallelogram. All the squares are parallelograms. Next, all kites are rhombus. Means. Kite must contain all the properties of rhombus, which is not there. Because kite contains just one property of rhombus that it is having two pair of it is having two pair of adjacent uh, sides equal. While rhombus contains all the sides equal. So kite does not contain all the properties of rhombus, but rhombus contain all the properties of kites. What are the properties of kite? That it is, it must have two different pair of sides equal. So that is there in rhombus, and it it is having these angles equal. So this is also there in rhombus. So all the rhombus are kite, but all the kites are not rhombus. Okay. Next, all parallelograms are trapezium. Yes, it is true. Why? Because trapezium is having one property that is. It must have one pair of parallel line, and that is the property is there in parallelogram. So it is true. Next is all squares are trapezium. While all parallelograms are trapezium, so all rectangles are also trapezium. All rhombus are also trapezium. All squares are also trapezium. So this way, that is also a true statement that all the squares are trapezium. Okay. So this way. This was question number one of exercise three point four. I am very sure it must be clear in your mind. 
the only thing which you will have to take care that does rectangle contain all the property of square if yes true if no false rhombus contain all the property of parallelogram if yes true otherwise false and so on okay let us see the next question in the next question what he is saying yes identify all the quadrilaterals that have four sides of equal length four sides of equal length i'm very sure now you can say all sides of e uh, four sides of equal length are there in square and what else rhombus and that much is not so nothing else you will have to write these two words square and rhombus what next the next part of this is four right angles Four right angles. So you will have to say the quadrilateral which is having four right angles. <coughs> four right angles are there in square and rectangle. So this time the answer is square and rectangle. Yeah, just these two words, nothing else. Next question number three. Fourth question number three is asking from us. Let's explain how a square is a quadrilateral. How a square is a quadrilateral. First part is quadrilateral. what is the property we studied for quadrilateral a quadrilateral is a closed figure made up of four line segment yes square is also made up of four line segment that is why square is a quadrilateral since square is a closed figure four line segments so it is a quadrilateral okay so square contain four sides that is why it is a quadrilateral next is why it is a parallelogram since square contain all the properties of parallelogram so it is a parallelogram so square contains all the properties of parallelogram next rhombus why it is a rhombus since all the properties of 
of rhombus. So it is a rhombus. What are those all properties? Its four sides are equal and its diagonals are perpendicular bisector. Okay, these are the two properties which square uh, rhombus gives to square. And uh, why it is a rectangle? Since its diagonals are equal and all the angles are ninety degree each. These are the two properties which it gets from rectangle. So that is why we can say that uh, we can write the properties as well as we can write this common way. Okay. So this way, this was question number three, in which we told. How a square is a quadrilateral, how a square is a parallelogram, rhombus and rectangle. Okay. Now let me solve question number four for you. What question number four is saying? Name the quadrilateral whose diagonals bisect each other. So diagonals bisect each other. What are those? Square, yes. Rhombus. Rectangle. And parallelogram. So this way all the four are having the property that their diagonals bisect each other. Next are perpendicular bisector. This was the first part. Are perpendicular. This is the symbol we use for perpendicular. Bisector. So, in which of these diagonals are perpendicular bisector? They are square and rhombus. So, this time the answer will be square and rhombus. So, square and rhombus contains diagonals perpendicular bisector. And then it is having a third part also. Diagonals are equal. So which of them is having diagonals as equal? That is rectangle and square. So this time the answer is rectangle and square. So this way, these are the few words which will be the solution of question number 4. Now, question number 5. What question number 5 is saying? Explain why rectangle is a convex quadrilateral. We studied convex and concave now. In exercise 1, what are, what are convex? Convex are those whose diagonals are inside the figure. And concave are those whose one of the diagonal is lying outside the figure. So, rectangle, you can see in rectangle, the diagonals are in, so you will write the same thing. Since the diagonals of a rectangle lie inside the figure so 
so it is convex quadrilateral okay so this is the answer for uh, question number 5 that since the diagonals of the rectangle lies inside the figure that is why it is a convex quadrilateral okay let us see the last question for the exercise as well as for the chapter what last question is say question number 6 abc is a right angled triangle okay so here i am having a right angled triangle abc and o is the midpoint of the side opposite to the right angle and the side which is opposite to ac o is the midpoint of the angle okay explain why o is equidistant from a b and c what you will i you they wants to from you that o is equal from a b and c now from a and c there is no doubt because o is the midpoint of ac <coughs> so o a is equal to o c this is very easily proved because o is the midpoint of ac so it will be equal from a and c now the big thing to prove is that how o is equal from b <coughs> so for that we will have to do a construction what is that construction we have drawn ad parallel to bc and ab parallel to c so what has happened now ad parallel to bc and ab parallel to cd and this angle is 90 degree so ab cd is a rectangle abc is a rectangle and in a rectangle diagonals are equal diagonals are equal and what else equal and bisect each other so ac is equals to bd and what else oa is equals to oc is equals to O B O C. So this way we can say that O is equidistant. Equidistant means equal distance from A B and C. Hence, O is hope it is clear if not let me explain you once again what is what was given that abc is a right angle triangle and o is the midpoint of ac we were he wants us to prove that o is equal from a from c and from b so o is already equal from a and c because o is the midpoint of ac so o is the midpoint of ac so o a is equal to o c Now the only thing to be proved how OA OC is equal to OB. So for that we constructed AD parallel to BC and DC parallel to AB. And since it is it is a 90 degree, the lines are parallel and pa parallel lines with 90 degree will be a rectangle. So ABCD has become a rectangle. Now in rectangle diagonals are equal and bisect each other. 
सो ए सी एंड बी डी आर इक्वल ओ ए ओ सी के इक्वल ओ बी ओ डी के इक्वल एंड सिंस बोथ ऑफ देम आर इक्वल टू ईच अदर सो ओ ए ओ बी ओ सी ओ डी ऑल आर इक्वल एंड हैंस ओ इज इक्वी डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम ए बी एंड सी ओके सो दिस वे योर चैप्टर नंबर थ्री इज कंप्लीट यू नीड यू सॉल्व ऑल द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑल्सो एंड प्रैक्टिस हार्ड बिकॉज फॉर योर कमिंग अप एग्जाम That is from twenty two, chapter number one, two, and three will be the syllabus. Okay, take care. Good day.